Thank you, Professor Lung, for inviting me to this very exciting conference and giving me the opportunity to share with you my research. Um, I'll start my talk by presenting, oh, okay, presenting an electron micrograph board from Wood Chalgi and David Phillips, and this electron micrograph actually represents the very first moment of our existence. Uh, fertilization takes place at the distal end of the oviduct and is uh, followed by the formation of the one cell uh, embryo. Uh, another, a series of successive cell divisions will uh, result in the uh, development of the two cell, four cell embryo and, uh, and the molar. And this takes place along the journey of this early blastocyst uh, through this oviduct. It is only the, at the, when the early embryo develops into the blastocyst that the, uh, it leaves the oviduct and holds down into the uterus. Uh, for implantation. Implantation is human, in human is uh, initiated by opposition, followed by adhesion and invasion of the blastocyst into the uterine wall. Uh, implantation or each of these steps will only take place in a receptive uterus and as mentioned already uh, during this session, the, uh, in human the uh, Uter the uterus acquires its receptivity between day 20, uh, 19 and 20, 21 of the menstrual cycle, also known as the, as the window of implantation. Uh, acquisition of, um, of uh, the receptivity of the uterus is subjected to the uh, control of these two steroid sex steroid hormone, estrogen and progesterone. Um, it takes two for the tango of implantation, a high quality embryo and a receptive uh, uterus. It is therefore quite surprising to find out that inadequate uterine receptivity is responsible for uh, is responsible for about 70 percent of implantation failures. Uh, furthermore, IVF treatment results or uh, reaches a very high success rate of fertilization per se, which means the binding or the, the, uh, of the oocyte and the sperm. However, once uh, what looks like an apparently, apparently good or high quality embryo uh, is transferred to the uh, uterus, the success rate dropped uh, to, to dramatically drop and this uh, very disappointing situation um, define implantation as the rate limiting or the bottleneck for the, the rate limiting step or the bottleneck for the success of IRT. This situation raises the pressing lead, the need for better, a better understanding of the com component of successful implantation and we, and we joined forces with the nearby IVF clinic at the Kaplan Medical Center. Our collaborators were Dr. Amichai Barash and Dr. Urit Ganot and uh, our studies revealed the following results. We found that endometrial biopsy substantially increases pregnancy rate in patients undergoing IVF and um, this study was published in 2003 and the most important uh, finding in this study was that the rate of take home baby is more than doubled after and uh, in women, IVF patients that underwent uh, biopsy treatment. Um, these findings were later confirmed in several other uh, IVF clinics worldwide and a partial list is presented here. It started from 2007 and goes up. I think that there are even uh, more recent publications, but this is 2016. And um, actually when we uh, 
conducted a literature search, we found out that other forms of local injury, such as hysteroscopy or courtage, they also increase the endometrial receptivity in human, according to these publications. And we concluded that local injury of the endometrium increases its receptivity by provoking implantation. Um, I'm not a physician, and my interest, once we've had this observation, my interest was shifted into, the, into the, trying to uh, attempt to understand the mechanism of action by which, uh, by which uh, the local injury of the endometrium uh, facilitate embryo implantation. And we spent something like 12 years just in looking and trying to understand the mecha this mechanism of action, as, and we came out with this uh, series of publications. I'm not going into details of this publication, but I'll just summarize our conclusion. We, uh, came up, we came up with the model that suggested that endometrial biopsy, as I mentioned, induces a local inflammatory response. The major component of this inflammatory response is TNF-alpha, and we have experimental evidence for each and every uh, detail that I uh, mention now. And um, this uh, um, is the other cytokines that are secreted that, uh, upon endometrial uh, uh, biopsy are GO alpha MIP1 AB, and these molecules recruit to the site of injury uh, uh, um, immune system, um, um, mainly monocytes that at the site of uh, inflammation they mature, differentiate into macrophages and disease, the dendritic cells, and these immune cells in turn will secrete their own set of uh, cytokines such as MIP1B, uh, GO-alpha, MCP1, RANTES, and interleukin um, six and um, this set of cytokines will stimulate the endometria, endometrial cells to differentiate and then secrete their own set of molecules. The major characteristics of the set, this set of molecules that we found in our studies was that they all shared adhesive properties like osteopontin, integrin, and um, the receptor for selectin. And upon the secretion of these molecules in the endometrium, the um, endometrial lumen became um, more adhesive, embryo attaches uh, to this receptive um, endometrium, and uh, this is followed by successful implantation. I'll show you now a schematic presentation of this model suggested by us, so I'll uh, and I emphasize some point which will take me further to our uh, recent or present <coughs> studies. Uh, as I mentioned, we have the uh, endometrial biopsy, pipel biopsy, and the secretion of cytokines, the recruitment of immune cells, the secretion of their own sets of, of molecules, their stimulatory effect or the induction or, or on the uh, endometrial epithelium, and secretion of a set of molecules Molecules. And, when, and uh, as I mentioned, these are uh, integrin, um, osteopontin, and the receptor for selectin. But among these molecules, we also found the CD44, which is a receptor for hyaluronic acid. And this attracted our attention. Um, this, this model has two parts. The, the A part is the... Uh, biopsy treatment cycle, and the second part is the uh, IVF cycle of treatment at which the blastocyst is placed, is transferred to the, uh, uh, recept to the receptive uh, endometrium and is attached to it. Now, um, hyaluronic acid, also known as hyaluronine, is a large extracellular cell surface associated polysaccharide. Hyaluronic acid is a major component of extracellular matrix known to regulate adhesion, uh, adhesion associated bi biological processes in a number of biological uh, settings. I'll just mention in the, there is an interaction between the leukocytes and the um, uh, endothelial cells of the blood vessels, and they don't just roll, they just, they are 
they stop and continue rolling in the blood, uh, in the blood vessels. And, and hyaluronic acid is responsible for this controlled uh, movement of leukocytes in the, in the vascular system. Now, as embryo, embryo implantation is initiated by a position of and attachment of the blastocyst to the uterine wall, we hypothesize that the adhesive properties of hyaluronic acid may facilitate blastocyst attachment. And for these studies, the previous study was done on human samples, and these studies were, were the, conducted using a mouse animal model. And in the mouse, the day of um, fertilization of z or zygote formation is defined as the embryonic day two point, uh, 0 0.5. During the next three days, there the, the are these successive cell divisions that uh, finally uh, result in uh, the formation of the early blastocyst and on day 4.5 the late blastocyst is uh, uh, formed or is developed. I would like just to, to uh, mention some points, some interesting points regarding the scale of time. Pregnancy in mice is last 21 days. In human it lasts something like 40 weeks, isn't it? The time at which it takes the embryo to go through this early embryonic de development and to reach the stage of um, uh, blastocyst and undergoing plantation is very similar. Um, our first experiments were directed at uh, trying to uh, follow uh, the weather at all. Hyaluronic acid is deposited during implantation in the mouse uterus, and you see here this dark uh, uh, dye here represents hyaluronic acid. This is the embryo. At day at, uh, early, uh, at the early stages of implantation, the uh, implantation hyaluronic uh, acid is uh, intensively deposited in the embryo and around the embryo. Uh, this is followed by clearance of hyaluronic acid, which now we know what this means, but the, uh, this is now just the, the observation clearance, which is followed again by reapposition of hyaluronic acid at later stages, at post implantation stages. Now, uh, hyaluronic acid and actually each molecule in our body uh, it represents the, or the abundance of each molecule represents the balance between its synthesis and degradation. So we decided that we would like to study the metabolism of hyaluronic acid in the implantation site, which means we um, we looked for the expression of the enzymes. There are three hyaluronic acid synthase enzymes and hyaluronidase, the enzymes that and the enzymes that are responsible for degradation of this uh, uh, molecule in the uh, implantation site. And we, as you see here, this is a quite busy slide, so I'll walk, I'll walk you through it. At day four, four five, four point five, early bl uh, blastocyst or early implant plantation, not early blastocyst, in blastocyst early implantation, you see that the, alone, the enzyme responsible for synthesis of hyaluronic acid is, the, is present, is expressed both by the embryo and the uh, luminal epithelium. Um, there is an interesting dynamic that follows this. We see less expression here, which is actually a mirror uh, picture to the deposition that we found in, in I showed in my previous slide. And we looked also on degradation. Degradation, which is quite high at uh, day 4.5, increases in the, uh, in the, it is upregulated one day uh, or uh, half day later, which is uh, positively regulated with the clearance of hyaluronidase that we shown previously in, in the slide that showed that up the uh, opposition of hyaluronic acid. And we also looked for CD44, as I mentioned, which is the um, uh, receptor for hyaluronic acid in any uh, tissue. Um, we... Uh, our studies were directed to address 
uh, address two specific points. As we found a position of hyaluronic acid, both in the mother and in the embryo, we try to differentiate between is, is the production of hyaluronic acid essential for uh, implantation and is it the maternal or embryonic hyaluronic acid which is which participate in this process. Now, in order to, uh, to address or to uh, study it or to explore the role of the maternal hyaluronic acid, we used a pharmacological approach. We treated, we uh, systemically treated the mothers with DON, which is the hyaluronic acid synthesis inhibitor. And if you compare the, uh, the implantation site at the treated animals as uh, to the control, you see the embryo, the very nice properly, properly developed embryo here, it shrinks uh, remarkably here and apparently the blood vessels around the, the um, uh, at the implantation site uh, leak and you see a lacuna of blood uh, in which the embryo is now uh, embedded. And if you look for uh, uh, the possible um, apoptotic process in this embryo of, and you stain it for tunnel, no apoptosis in under control conditions and the high level of apoptosis in the uh, following inhibition of um, hyaluronic acid synthesis by the mother, by the uterus. However, uh, even though this is actually post attachment or, or a, some kind of advanced stage of implantation. However, if you look at the, at the attachment itself, we, 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 saw, we see that the inhibition of maternal hyaluronic acid synthesis does not decrease the number of implantation sites. So we decided that our next experiments were directed to the embryo. And for this, to, to study the um, role or possible role of hyaluronic acid from the fetal side of fetus, uh, embryonic source of hyaluronic acid, we used a transge transgenic embryonic tophectoderm mouse model and I elaborate, elaborate on it. You see here the blastocyst and it is, we um, recovered it from the pregnant a mother, we incubate, we remove the zona pellucida and then we incubated it in the presence of a, a lentiviral. And the lentiviral, this lentiviral uh, viruses express GFP. And you see here that they attach to the um, uh, periphery of this embryo. And actually, this, the periphery is the uh, component of the embryo that, that is, um, interacts with the uterus, so we were interested with this peripheral uh, uh, component of the embryo. And you see here that uh, the, this, the viruses infect the periphery and only this infection or the expression of the GFP, which is a marker for infection, is exclusive to the tophectoderm cells. And since the tophectoderm cells um, uh, are the major component of the placenta. And the embryo here the, uh, is not uh, affected by this uh, uh, infection. If we, if we wait towards the end of the pregnancy, we see that the placenta, if we are successful, the placenta is green, the embryo is not. And this is the schematic presentation. And, that, and this... Um, this um, uh, method was established in 2007, used up to these days only for gain of function um, experiments, and we used it for loss of function ex experiments. We uh, uh, modified this system in order to dilate genes encoding for hyaluronic acid synthesizing enzymes. And here you see how it looks in real life. You see that four hours after infection, only the peripheral layer is, um, uh, is affected by this transfection. And at day 18 and a half, the placenta is green, full, uh, shines very nicely, the embryo is absolutely dark, no effect on the embryo, no infection of the embryo. This is achieved by the, due to the presence of tight 
tight junctions at, the, at, at this area, but what we were interested in is, is the um, uh, proof of, of concept of this method. And uh, as I mentioned, we use this method in order by uh, short interference uh, RNA, uh, we use it to delete two of the enzymes that are responsible for, for the synthesis of hyaluronic acid, and you see that upon treatment there is a remarkable decrease almost ver and very low level of in this enzyme in our treated, it, in the trophic ectoderm of our treated blastocyst. And we looked for the effect of this uh, knockout in, in, in fact of uh, the capacity of the embryo to generate hyaluronic acid on attachment. Our first experiment was done in vitro. We uh, plated um, endometrial, human endometrial cell line on, uh, on a dish. We placed mouse blastocyst treated by uh, our, uh, mo in our, our model on this dish, and we find that uh, under control we define the level of attachment as one, and there is a clear decrease uh, um, elicited by the deletion of uh, has one uh, very low uh, expression by has two and a very significant dec de uh, decrease by the uh, co-transfection of the um, blastocyst with, uh, to, for, to delete these both enzymes. Um, this was done in vitro. Now we did an experiment in vivo. We used these blastocysts, transferred them to, pre to um, pseudo-pregnant mothers, and we looked for it, uh, whether they attached to the uterus, and again, the same result. You see uh, 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 attachment at, uh, under control condition, which is lowered by the deletion or the knockout of the capacity of the embryo to uh, express or generate this uh, hyaluronic acid. Um, we came across a, a review uh, in Nature, the, the title of which was Yaloronan from ex extracellular glue, that this was the way that we treated actually yaloronic acid, to pericellular uh, Q. And we read carefully this um, uh, review and we found out that both yaloronic acid itself, upon its uh, binding to its SID44, uh, uh, the its specific receptor, as well as degradation products of hyaluronic acid, since hyaluronic acid is a very long molecule. So both the, the full length molecule and degradation product are able to uh, stimulate a, a downstream signaling pathway. So we uh, went back to our suggested model and we found out that in addition to uh, CD44, we also have a, a upregulation of the expression of osteopontin upon a biopsy treatment, so we, and we um, look to see what osteopontin does. It is involved in the attachment between the integrins of human endometrium and that of the trophoblast. The, both the human the endometrium and the embryo express the um, Inter, uh, integrin molecule and osteopontin acts at, like a, a link, a bridge between these two integrin molecule and is responsible for attachment and adhesion. So we looked for the expression of osteopontin in our tr uh, transgenic trophoblast and we see that there is very high expression, impressive expression of osteopontin under control condition and upon the uh, knockout or, or deletion of both HAS1 and HAS2, there is a, a significant or remarkable decrease in the expression of osteopontin and uh, our summary is that Tofectoderm synthesized hyaluronic acid plays as an essential uh, role as the, at the fetomaternal interface allowing the attachment of blastocyst to the uterine epithelium. This effect is probably mediated by osteopontin expression and we now uh, trying to find out whether osteopontin is um, directly the, the uh, expression of osteopin is directly regulated by hyaluronic acid in our system. Uh, 
Uh, our conclusions are that as the placenta is primarily composed of trophoblast uh, cells, trophector them targeted genetic manipulation could be further employed for the exp uh, exploration of specific placental gene in the successful pregnancy. We can use not only osteopontin, which was one target, one target of choice in this experiment, but now we can look at a large array of genes that uh, are uh, uh, listed in the literature to take part in implantation and see whether they are um, the, the uh, upregulated or downregulation or regulated by hyaluronic acid. And if we look further, uh, uh, Jerry some said previously something about a long uh, vision, this strategy could possibly be employed for gene therapy of placental uh, pathologies such as first trimester miscarriages, preeclampsia, placental failure, and intrauterine growth restriction. Um, uh, I would like to acknowledge the people that took part in this study. As I mentioned, this was done by um, our, um, in the, my laboratory at the Weizmann Institute, and the people that uh, were uh, intensively involved in this study were Dr. Yulia Gnainsky that uh, did all the uh, human studies, and then my pr uh, present uh, PhD student and a former PhD student that are now trying to find the role of uh, hyaluronic acid in the, or to explore the role of hyaluronic acid in this system. This study is done with collaboration with Professor Michal Neman in my uh, institute. And uh, of course, I mentioned we couldn't do anything without the collaboration of the IVF unit at the Kaplan Medical Center, as I mentioned before, Dr. Amichai Barash and Dr. Uh, Irid Granot, and I'll gladly answer questions. <clears throat>